Hello, good morning. My name is Osamagbe Leslie Egariba, and I'm a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ. You're welcome to another exciting edition of this study. Today we shall be talking about the topic, is baptism essential for salvation or is baptism necessary for salvation? Now, baptism is a very popular concept among almost every individual in the world. But unfortunately, there are so many false doctrines that are being preached with regards to baptism. So many persons have actually ignored baptism. They said it's not necessary. Some say it's just an outward sign of an inward grace or something, some ridiculous <laughs> the definition of, of baptism you, you can find everywhere. But then, we, we don't care about what people say about what baptism is or the purpose of baptism. The purpose of our study is to know what God's word, the Bible, actually say about baptism. Is baptism necessary for the salvation of the soul of man? Or is it just enough for one to say, Oh Lord, I call upon your name, accept me, and now I'm your child, I'll follow you. Amen. Is it enough? Because that is what most denominational churches will tell you. When you listen to them over the radio or the TV, after preaching a very long sermon, you know, they tell you, how many of you want to give your life to Christ if you're watching me over the TV or on the radio? Please lay your hand on your TV and repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner and I want to follow you. Please come into my life and I will be with you. I will follow you all through the, the days of my life. Amen. And now you're saved. Do we have such example in the scriptures? That a man required or requested or for what he would do to be saved and then he is told to say some form of prayer and he is being told he's saved? Well, let us go back to the Bible and see. We shall take our minds to some passages of the scriptures that talks about baptism and the salvation of the soul of man. And then we'll see if there is any correlation or relationship between baptism and the forgiveness of sins or the salvation of man's soul. The first passage we will look at is Mark chapter 16 verse 16. In that passage, Jesus said, He who believe and is baptized shall be saved. He was giving the great commission to the apostles and he told them to go into the world and preach the gospel. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, this is a very clear statement. Belief plus baptism equals salvation. But many people try to play around and look for some other obscure meaning to the, to, to the simple reading of the text. If you tell someone, for instance, he will walk up to the table, he walks up to the table and shakes my hand, will receive $100. No one will find it difficult to understand what I've just said. Walk up to the table, shake my hand, and get the hundred dollars. You don't have problem understanding that. But Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Then you find it difficult to, to understand that belief plus baptism would give you salvation. That's, that's ridiculous. And so Mark 16, 16 is clear passage telling us that what is required to be saved is belief plus baptism. It takes two things to be saved according to that text. And it takes only one thing to be damned. Not believing. So you cannot get baptized if you don't believe. And so it was not necessary for Jesus to have repeated, he who does not believe and does not baptize, or is not baptized, shall be damned. Because you can't cross over to baptism without first believing. So brethren and friends listening to me, it is a mistake on the part of the denominational friends, and it is one of the ways the devil is using to recruit workers into his kingdom. To try to paint the picture that baptism has absolutely nothing to do with salvation. So, the Bible is clear. Mark 16, 16. You believe and is baptized shall be saved. So, for you to be saved today, you have to be baptized. Secondly, we have to look at Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Actually, reading from verse 36, you would see that the Bible actually said so many things about, you know, when Luke was writing about the day of Pentecost, when the people listened to the, the, the preaching of Peter, they asked him in verse 36, he says, When they heard this, they were caught to the earth and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them in verse 38, 
He said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there are two things involved. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For you to receive two things. The forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you can't keep one and take one. So baptism is necessary. And in verse 41 we were told that those who gladly received his word were baptized. And on that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And so if baptism is not necessary for salvation, what's the point of their baptism on that very day? We have other series of examples in the Bible whereby people listen to the word of God and immediately they got baptized. An example is the, 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 the example of uh, Lydia and her household in Acts chapter 16. We also find in that same chapter the, uh, the Philippian jailer that saw Paul and Silas uh, are singing and praying in, in the prison and then the prison doors were opened. So this man heard the gospel that night. The same hour of the night, the Bible says, he took them out, washed the stripes, and he was baptized immediately himself and his household. So baptism is necessary for salvation. And then another text we're going to look at is Romans chapter 6, verse 3. The Bible says, Or do you not know that as many of us as have been baptized into Christ have, bapt have been baptized into his death? That just as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we also should walk in newness of life. Baptism is a, 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 a type of the death, you know, it's, it's, it's a symbol or a type of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You're buried with him in baptism and you are raised also to walk with Christ in newness of life. So, you don't, you don't have any excuse for you not to be baptized after hearing the word of God. So people who teach that baptism has absolutely nothing to do with your salvation, they're they not teaching the truth. They're teaching false doctrine. The Bible clearly states that baptism is important, is necessary in order for you to be saved. And if you look at it, you discover that in all biblical examples of baptism in the scriptures, all of them, beginning from the book of Acts down, you see that they were all baptized immediately they heard the word. They were all baptized immediately they were preached to. Those who gladly received the word submit themselves for water baptism. And so there is no reason why anyone should say baptism is not necessary. Another passage we like to turn to is Acts chapter 22, verse 16. When Paul was talking about his conversion, he says, Ananias came to him and he was talking. So why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Arise, be baptized and wash away your sins. You have to allow baptism. You have to, it is at the point of baptism. You have to allow Christ to wash away your sins at the point of baptism. It is not the water per se. Some, of, some people teach the, bapt, the doctrine of baptismal regeneration and they think that's what we are advocating. No. The doctrine of baptismal regeneration states that water washes away your sins. No, we are not saying water washes away your sins. But we are saying it is at the point of baptism that Christ's blood is spiritually assessed in order for the alien sinners' sins to be washed away. So you don't you don't uh, uh, try to pretend. You don't try to take baptism out. It's just like the example of Naaman in the Old Testament. He was told to go dip himself in River Jordan. Did it, would anyone say he it is the water that 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 cleansed him? No. It is the obedience. That's what God wants. Faith without work is dead. Talking about obedient faith. And so when Jesus told the blind man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And he washed, he went there, he washed and came back seeing. Would anyone with intelligence say that the water was the one that, that bring, brought back his eyesight? No. But it was his obedience. So when Jesus said he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. He's talking about you being obedient to that command. And once you go down into the water in the likeness of Christ's death, 
burial and resurrection, you raise up. At that point, your sins are washed away. That's what the Bible says. Many people throw away these, but the truth is, that is one of the ways the devil is tricking people and recruiting them into his kingdom. Another passage we're going to look at is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. The text says, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also, also now save us, not the removal of the filth of the body, but the answer of a good conscience towards God. This passage made it clear. It said, baptism saves us. That's what the Bible says. And some people will come to you and say, baptism has nothing to do with salvation. They try to get away from these passages. The only way for you to get away from this passage is just for you to deny that the passages are unreal. Or to pervert them. So 1 Peter 3.21 says, baptism saves us. It now went further to explain what I was saying earlier. That it's not the washing of the field of the body. No. It is the answer of the good conscience towards God. And so, if you must be saved, you have to be baptized. There is nothing like sinner's prayer in the Bible. We don't have an example of that. And if you really want to be saved, you want God to, to recognize you as his child, you've got to be baptized. Now, before uh, rounding up this session, because I was just intending to give answer to the question, is baptism necessary to salvation? I don't want to overstretch the topic. So if there are questions, we answer them in the next series of our preaching. I want us to look at the baptism of Jesus Christ and see if we can talk to ourselves and draw some inferences from there. When Jesus Christ was baptized by John in River Jordan in Matthew chapter 3, some things happened. Let's read. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 6, I mean 16, I beg your pardon, to 17. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Three things happened at the baptism of Jesus Christ. The first thing was that the heaven opened. When he came up immediately from the water, the heavens were opened to him. That's one. The second one was that he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. The Spirit of God descended upon him at his baptism. And the third thing was a voice from heaven proclaiming and calling Jesus Christ his beloved son. God calling Christ his beloved son. Brethren and friends, particularly those who have not been baptized, if you want the heavens to be opened unto you, you've got to be baptized. If you want the Spirit of God to descend and come into your life, you've got to be baptized. And if you want God to call you His child, you've got to be baptized. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God. Some translation says that we should be called the children of God. Now, those who are called the children of God are those who have submitted themselves in water for baptism. Uh, submitted themselves uh, for baptism in water. Not those people who have not obeyed God in, by, by being baptized, by being immersed in water for the forgiveness of their sins. So, if you want God to call you His child, you have to be baptized. And if you want the heavens to be opened unto you, you have to be baptized. If you want the Spirit to come upon you, you have to be baptized. My prayer for you as you listen to this is that you reflect, God help you to reflect on the words as we have spoken from the scriptures and that you take the right decision, be baptized, tomorrow may be too late. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.